Hey what up, welcome back to another quick Flutter tutorial. In this one, I'll be showing you how to implement Google sign in into your app. Now the only thing I need you to do before watching this tutorial is to make sure you have connected your app to your Firebase project, which I've already covered in many videos on my channel. So make sure to do that first and then let's get into the tutorial. Come back to our Firebase console and you go to the sign in method. So let's add a new provider and of course let's click on Google. So you can see here it says to enable Google sign in for your Android apps, you must provide the SHA-1 release fingerprint for each app. So I'll show you how to do this later on, but let's just click enable for now. And we can have a public facing name for the project. So I'm just gonna call it my Flutter app. You can call it whatever you want. And let's just have a support email. So put your email in here and let's click save. Cool, now it says to download the latest config file, but we actually don't need to do that. So just close that. And what you wanna do is, if you go to your project settings and you just scroll all the way down, we can see the two apps that we added in. So the Android and the iOS. So if you look at the Android, it says to add the fingerprint. So if you go to this question mark, it says, see this page for further information. So I'm just gonna click on this one. And if you want further detailed instructions, it's on this page, but I can show you what we need to do. Now there's Mac, Linux, and then there's a Windows command. So just do the one that's more appropriate for your machine. So for me, I'm using a Mac. So what you wanna do is you just wanna copy this bit of code. And let's come back to our Flutter app, open up the terminal, and just paste it in. Now it's looking for a key store password. So if you come back to this page, you can see the password is just by default Android. So come back to the password and just type in Android and hit enter. And then you can see here, it comes up with the SHA-1 and SHA-256 numbers here. So all we need to do is we just want to grab each of these ones. So starting with the SHA-1, I want you to just grab all this and copy it. Come back to our Firebase console and let's click add fingerprint. And if you paste it in, it's gonna recognize the SHA-1 and then let's click save. And you wanna do the same thing for the other SHA-256. Okay, so let's grab all this one. So make sure you grab all of it. And then let's paste it in again, add a new fingerprint, and it's gonna recognize the SHA-256, and you just wanna hit save. And for the Android, that's the setting up. Pretty easy. Now for the iOS, if you look at the package, so Google sign in, this is the package that we're going to use. And so, like I said, you can have a look at this to see some more specific information, but I can show you how to do this. So if you look at this platform integration, we just did the Android one. So to access the Google sign-in, you'll need to make sure to register your application. That's what we just did. And then the next things, you don't really need to do the Google People API and stuff. So we don't need to do that for the Google sign-in. That's just for some extra features. Now let's move on to the iOS integration. So it says, please see instructions. So I'm just gonna click on this one and I like to show you this page to let you know what I'm following. So all of the instructions are actually on these pages, but like I said, I can just show you the main things that you need to do. If you scroll down to the iOS integration, you can see all the steps. So step one, we already did. Create a Firebase project and register your application. Step two, enable Google sign-in. We just did that. And then step three, it says, make sure to download a new copy of your project's Google service info P list and do not put this file in your project. Okay, so if you go to your Firebase console and you click on the iOS, you can see this Google service info.p list. And if you click on it, it's gonna download some file. And then I want you to open that up. And so it's gonna look something like this. And so what we want from here is just the client ID. So you can see in step four, we need to add the client ID. So what I want you to do is I want you to go to the iOS runner and then the info.plist file and we wanna paste 
this bit of code in. So I want you to copy this. Come back to our code. I want you to go to iOS, runner, info.plist, and just here at the top, I want you to just paste that in. And then you can see here, what we need to do is we need to get our client ID. So let's open up that thing that we just downloaded. Let's get the client ID. It's this value here. So I want you to copy that and let's paste it in. Cool. Coming back to the instructions for number five, it says if you need to authenticate a backend server, you can do the same thing. But for us, our backend server is Firebase, so we don't need to do anything further. So we can skip step five. We can go to step six, and I want you to do the similar thing. So I want you to just copy all of this code, and we're going to paste it just underneath what we pasted earlier. And then you can see here to do, we need to get the reverse client ID. So let's come over here and let's get this value and copy and paste. Awesome. And then let's just save this. And that's actually all the setting up we need to do for iOS. And I gotta say, when it comes to using Flutter apps, sometimes we need to do some native code for iOS and Android like we just did. But I feel like those steps were quite short and simple. So hopefully you followed on. Now what we need to do is just to do a little bit of actual code in our app. So if you open up the terminal, we're going to import that package that I showed you earlier. So Flutter pub add Google underscore sign underscore in. And then once you've got that, let's close the terminal and then we can start coding. So, whoops, let's close all this. Now I want to go to the services, auth. So this auth service.dart file is where we have all the logic for the authentication, right? So right now we can get the current user. We can do this email sign in and the email sign up and we can sign out of course. And so now, just underneath that, let's fill out the Google sign in. We're going to start with the interactive sign in process. So this is just the pop up that's going to show up when the user clicks on the Google sign in button. The user is then going to select their account and then we can store it in this Google sign in account. Let's just call it G user. So once we try to sign in, we're going to obtain the auth details from that request. So Google sign in authentication, let's just call it G auth. And we can use that to create a new credential for our user. So what that means is we can say Google auth provider, get the credential, and we just need to give it this two bit of information. So the access token and the ID token. So if you look at our G auth, it's got each of these properties. So we can just give it the appropriate stuff. And then finally we can sign in. So return await Firebase auth, which I think I already created the instance at the top. Yeah, there it is. So let's just grab that one and then we can sign in with credential. Sweet. So in terms of the code logic for signing in, that's actually it. Very simple. Now let's do the UI. So I want to have a button to actually enable this Google sign in, right? So if you go to the pages, Let's go to our login page, which is this page here. And at the very bottom, let's have a button. So if I just scroll all the way down, so below this, let's just create another bit of size the box for some space. And I'm just going to create a Google sign in button. So I'm just going to use an elevated button for now. And on the pressed, we want to go to our auth service and then you can see we can sign in with Google. So that was the method that we just created. And 
let's see if I save this cool so there's our button and by the way it's always a good idea if you bring in a new package to kill the app and then just restart it sometimes that will fix some little issues but then if you come back to our login page and then I click on Google sign in then you can bring up this pop-up page and then we can start to sign in which is really awesome Now one error I just noticed is if I open this up and then I just cancel it, then we have some error here. Null check operator used on a null value. So what that means here is you see this first part, which is the sign in process. So this is where the Google sign in pop up appears and we're waiting for the user to sign in. Now when the user cancels the whole process, then our G user here will be null. So that's why we're getting this bit of error. So let's just account for the situation when the user cancels the sign in screen. So we're just going to check if G user is null, then let's just return. And what that's going to do is it's just going to stop this method from executing any further. It's just going to exit it out. Okay, so if it's null, then let's just stop the code. Otherwise, we can keep going, which means we can get rid of this null check operator because we know for sure it's not null. And that should work now. So if I click Google sign in, and you can try to sign in, but then if I also cancel, then we're gonna get no errors and everything's working smoothly. By the way, I tested this on my real iPhone and real Android device just to make sure it works and it's working fine. I want you to test it on your real devices as well, not just the simulator. And you'll find out that if you use your actual phone, then it'll remember your Gmails that you already signed in. So you can just easily sign in that way. So I want you to test it on your real device. And once we're logged in, we are directed to this home page. And I'm just going to create a little text widget in the center. Let's go to our auth service and get the current user. And let's display the email as a string. And so you can see in the middle of the screen, it will just display the current user's email. And that's it. That's how we do Google sign in.